Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and just a few weeks back, I published a list of some of the most underrated game engines out there. If you didn't check it out already, I highly recommend checking that out. I will link it down below. But one of the key engines on that list uh, was an engine called the Wicked Engine. Now, if you're a regular channel, you've seen the Wicked Engine in the past. I covered it first in like 2020, I think, and then again in 2022. Well, as fate would have it, after I did this coverage of Wicked Engine in this underrated game engine list, well, it got a couple of major new features. Those new features are, and I want you to keep in mind, this is mostly the work of a single person. Uh, Yanos, Yanos, <laughs> we'll go with just Yanos, uh, he uh, just added Xbox support, and this is not UWP support, this is actually native Xbox support. Uh, also, we've got support for the PlayStation 5. So the newest generations of consoles are supported by this single user effort. Now, another thing on it is you'll notice there's also a big website update. Now, when I did the underrated game engines, I said part of the reasons why it's probably underrated is because it has a website that only a mother could love. If you watch that video, there's a shot of the website in it, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, the nice thing is, it now has a much prettier website, so if you want to go ahead and check out Wicked Engine, uh, it has a more appealing kind of... Uh, entry point to it. Now this is a lightweight code-based game engine. So if you want to develop your game entirely using uh, C++, you can. But there's also a uh, editor built in. Uh, we're going to see that in action in just a moment. And the cool thing here is the editor is actually available on Steam. So you don't have to build anything from code or anything. You can literally just download it and start playing around with the editor and then you can actually script using Lua. So you can write your stuff directly using uh, C++. There's a number of language examples showing you how to do that. And in fact, you could build your own game engine on top of this guy, and that's what the Game Guru Max game engine did. And you'll also notice it is completely free, works on Windows and Linux platform. I do not think Mac is uh, in the cards, but I'm not 100% certain there. This is, again, available up on Steam, so if you want to just go ahead and check out what the editor runs like, what the features are for you, you can just grab it on Steam, a much easier approach. Or, of course, you can grab it on GitHub and build it from code yourself. You're going to see it is available under the MIT Open Source License, which is very liberal uh, in what it allows you to do. There is documentation as well as Lua documentation, so if you want to go ahead and check it, what that is like. And if you want to work with things uh, from a C++ perspective, you can see a small example of what a C++ code looks like, and it is super clean. Again, here is also the same thing for scripting using the Lua language. Again, super easy to understand. Uh, I, the fact that this is a single developer's effort just absolutely blows my mind. So that is Wicked Engine. I'm not going to leave it there, obviously. We're going to go ahead and check it out in action. This is the Steam uh, install if you go ahead and grab it. Uh, this is the About page. I'm actually not 100% certain how to get rid of that. So I think I just click About again. Yeah, okay, now it's gone. So here it is. This is the editor. Um, it's mostly controlled by these two windows over here. So this one is kind of your scene graph, your rendering settings, and so on. And over here is your selected entity uh, and the components attached. This is a component-based engine. Uh, so you can add a script component to things if you wish. And you can get an idea from this rendering right here just the graphical capability of this. By the way, this is the uh, Lumberyard Bistro scene. NVIDIA released an updated version of it. If you want to go ahead and check out this with some really nice graphics, Although the truth is, you don't actually have to grab a project like this. If you go to the open dialog here, this is under Steam. So go to Steam apps and then go to common, go to Wicked Engine. Of course, if you download it from GitHub and build it yourself, it's going to be a different path. You're going to notice in here you have content. Inside of content, you have a choice between models and scripts. We're going to show you both of these in just a second. Let's start off with models and we'll go into Sponza. Sponza is a famous graphic rendering uh, demonstration scene. You're getting an idea of the capabilities of this guy. So as I mentioned earlier, on. Your scene graph is over here. Your uh, entity selection is over here. You're going to notice, for example, we have this guy over here floating in the winds. Well, the cool thing about this guy is it's got uh, soft body physics attached to it. So you're going to notice over here the component has soft body physics. And we can drop down any of those things, set the properties over here. You're going to notice you can also add other components via this mechanism over here. So you can do things like add audio to something, add physics to something, add decal, uh, physical collider, a camera, and so on. Even a video uh, can actually be added this way. So this is how you add components to entities in your world. Again, all of your various different entities are down over here. If you want to create a new entity, go into the Entities tab, and then you're going to find a drop down over here, and all of the various different options are available here. 
Uh, we'll, we'll show you some of this in action in just a moment. So uh, rendering capabilities, come on back up here. You go to graphics, you're going to see there is a ton of different options. So you've got uh, various different uh, texture qualities there, different mechanism. You even have a path tracer in here as well. You've got uh, multiple forms of anti-aliasing, including temporal anti-aliasing. Uh, you have uh, multiple different GI solutions. You can do ray trace shadows if you so wish to do so. Um, you've got different global illumination message methods such as DDGI which we'll go ahead and turn that on and see what the end result is. So there, this is DDGI, and let's turn DDGI back off. So DDGI back off. Okay, I'm not sure that it actually did much. So, oh, because VXGI is on. So there is VXGI global illumination on. So here, let's turn DDGI on. So you've got multiple different global illumination solutions available here. Uh, this is voxel-based, I believe, is what the VX stands for here. And of course, you've got the options for how to handle all of these various different settings in here as well. Uh, you have uh, control here. You could have lens flares if you want to go back to the 90s. You've got various different ambient occlusion options. Uh, you have uh, screen space reflections. Uh, we could do uh, ray trace reflections, ray trace diffuse here as well. We can have eye adaptation here. We can put motion blur in case. You've got an absolute ton of functionality here for uh, your graphics, including uh, FSSR, FSR 2.1. I thought there was DLSS, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just FSR there, uh, which will work on NVIDIA cards, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, we've got chromatic aberration here, and even if you want, you've got uh, tune shader-based outlines over here. Let me see if I can get that. I don't know if that'll work without certain special settings here. And we've also got a sharpening filter if you want to make things look all absolutely embossed. So there are a ton of rendering options available over here. And you see there is our scene. By the way, it is a tab-based approach, so we can do a new scene like this. I go ahead and close up this scene over here. Another neat thing that you can do with this guy, uh, so so far we've loaded up a model. By the way, you can add another model into the scene, so I could load up the same scene. So I could load back up Sponza like so, which I don't know why I picked one of the larger things to load. Uh, and all of my graphics settings are carried over. So I'm going to do a reset so we get the standard graphics again in just a minute. So you could do that, and then I could come here, and we can go ahead and open up another thing. And this is basically like doing an asset import. So come down here, and you can see I've got like cubes and dragons and so on. So this is a Dragon OBJ file. You'll notice you're available in OBJ, GLTF, GLB, VRM, Lua, and WIC. And so there is no FBX support out of the box for this guy. I get, I'll do that. GLB helmet. You've heard of, you've seen this guy for sure in the past. And there it is loaded in like so. Uh, again, I have some really weird effects, but especially that sharpen filter is making everything look hideous. Uh, but there, you can see that is how you can go ahead and import new objects into the scene. And you can create a new scene by clicking plus over here. Actually, you know what? These graphic settings are fine. So I'm going to go here. We'll create a new scene. We'll close that scene down right there. And I'm going to open up a different scene a different way. And what you're going to notice here is if I go back to content, we have scripts as well. And these are, if you want to go ahead and see some simple scripts, uh, you can see these and these will actually load up the entire scene. Now you can actually go beyond simple scripts and see full blown game demos. So for example, here is a fighting game implemented. You just come in here to the Lua folder here and this loads the entire scene, imports everything you need to create the fighting game you are about to see in action right here. So if you want to create a fighting style game, you can do so. I don't know why it's running so slow. It must be something to do with my uh, video capture because it normally isn't slow. Uh, but yeah, there is a full fighting game here demonstrated uh, for, um, there's even a taunt. So let's do a taunt. There we go. Uh, so a full fighting demo here available as well if you want to go ahead and check that out. And that will all be available if you go ahead and download it from Steam. Now, the cool thing here is if you want to go ahead and create your own world yourself. So here we are, brand new scene, just loaded things up. Watch this one. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to create a new train. So come down here and we're just going to go, all right, let's go ahead and create a train like so. And I know to some of you, it sounds like train when I say terrain, uh, just deal with it. All right. So here we are. Uh, our train is created. Our sky is created. Everything we need is created. So if we expand this guy out, you're going to notice a number of different settings for it oh, over here. So let's expand the train down over here. And you're going to see you've got uh, various different options available for the train. The train is built into a number of different chunks. On top of that, we also have a full-blown weather system here. You can load in the sky. You can have uh, voxel-based uh, clouds going on here. So, sorry, volumetric clouds available here. You can have them cast shadows and receive shadows. You've got control over all of various different cloud settings. Uh, and then even here for your train on the ground here. So let's go back over here to the train. I thought this was batched. So let me go ahead and, yeah, so I don't know why it wasn't expanding out like that. So here I just select it. Here you can see this little particular chunk of train and you'll see the various different components that are attached to it. So I'm going to go ahead and we will find 
Uh, actually, I don't think I really care about any of them specifically. I care about the top level one, so the terrain here. Uh, we've got other options here for actually controlling on the terrain. Uh, so we've got weather defaults over here, but I can choose things like uh, change the amount of grass that are available, the prop, so grass density. So here, let's see. So we can have more grass. We can have less grass. We can also change the length of our grass. So we could have this like a savanna, or we can drop it down to like nothingness. Uh, it, it's, it's staggeringly impressive, to be honest. And then, of course, you got your paint tools over here. So I can go back here to the paint. Uh, you can see if I drop down to paint, we have other tools here, such as sculpting add. So I can bring Sculpting Add in here. I can change the size of my brush, the power of my brush, like so. Uh, and then I can basically start sculpting my terrain. And honestly, I could keep going and going, but it's not really the purpose of this video. I wanted you to know about Wicked Engine. I wanted you to know about the updates. I'd like you to know the fact that this website now uh, isn't completely and utterly hideous, and it is just a strangely robust game engine, especially if you're like code focused, you want to write your game in C++ or you want to write mostly in code, but you still want to have that editor available to you. Wicked Engine has all of that and completely open source, completely free MIT. And this is one person's work, which honestly just blows my mind. Now I know other people have contributed so it's no longer a single developer effort, but for the most part, this is, and this thing just got PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X support. That is just astonishing to me. So this is Wicked Engine. Again, now with a much nicer web page, which is available at wickedengine.net if you want to go ahead and check this guy out. It's also available up on Steam. If you are interested in seeing more hands-on of Wicked Engine than what I showed today, it's kind of, you know, wet your palate with what I showcased today. If you want to see a, a bit of a, say, a tutorial, like an introduction, kind of maybe a half an hour overview of Wicked Engine, let me know if there's enough interest and maybe I will do so in the future. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is Wicked Engine and now even better than ever, let me know what you think and are you just as amazed that this is first off free and the, the efforts of a single developer it just blows my mind personally so wicked engine let me know what you think comments down below and i'll talk to you all later goodbye